dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yup, what's good, original crew? It's your boy DJ Nuki, your girl. It's here on the We're back on the channel with another Mr. Ballin' video for y'all today, man. <sighs> Being a little nosy today. <laughs> we got crazy neighbors. <coughs> Not neighbors, but neighbors. Secret. Caught on camera. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Getting caught on the doorbell. Right. You know, everybody now, now they got a ring doorbell. You can't be doing all willy nilly shit outside. All right. Everybody. Now I talk, like, think about it where we stay at. Mm -hmm. Every, almost every individual got a ring doorbell. It's a good, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. Cause stuff happens. I feel like it's a good thing. But then think about some, some other people got cameras. I ain't no, ain't no wrong with having a camera. Like, even though you got a ring doorbell, but having a camera in the front yeah. of the house in blind spots and then having a camera on the inside. Yeah. As far as the entrance entryway, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's, it's protection, it's protection, yeah. it's protection, man. So with that being said, make sure y'all check out the links in the description box down below. You already know where to go, man. You want to first part, you gotta do it. Check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, always lock it in with a thumbs up for us, man. But let's go ahead and get into the story. You ready? I'm ready. Let go. Today's story is about a typical middle-class American family that had everything going for them. Mom and dad were still totally in love 25 years after getting married. Okay. Their two kids were happy, successful, and poised to do huge things in life. But then in 2021, it was like things just started to go so badly for this family. It was like they had hit the stretch of unfathomably bad luck, but their misfortunes had nothing to do with bad luck. Their misfortunes were the result of someone in their midst carrying around a very big secret. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, the next time the like button is in a deep sleep, put a wig on them, also a beard and mustache combo, and then disguise their room to look like a hospital suite, and then violently shake them awake and tell them they've just woken up after being in a medically induced coma for years. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. She don't want me taking no notes today. Dang. In, in the early 1990s, a woman in her early 20s named Krista Freider was working as a manager inside of a retail store called the Boston Store in Madison, Wisconsin. Not long after she was hired there, the Boston store would hire another employee to work at the <coughs> Madison location. His name was Bart Halderson, and like Krista, he was in his early 20s, although he was three years younger than Krista, and he was hired to be a clerk. Bart and Krista didn't know each other before working at the same location, mm -hmm. but their shifts often overlapped, and so in time they got to know each other, and they found they had a lot in common. They both had grown up roughly outside of Madison, Wisconsin. They both had graduated from the same college, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and they both shared a love of home design. Krista, who had majored in art history in college, was very passionate about interior home design. As for Bart, he was just one of those people who naturally could fix just about anything with his bare hands, and growing up, his favorite projects were anything to do with home repairs. Whether it was something super simple or super complex, he didn't care, he just found it incredibly satisfying to keep a home in immaculate condition. And so Bart and Krista bonded over their commonalities, and in time, their working friendship evolved into a full-fledged romance. And by 1994, they had left the Boston store, they had gotten married, and they had moved in together to their own apartment in DeForest, Wisconsin, which is not far from Madison. 
Two years after that, in 1996, Bart and Krista welcomed their first child into the world. It was a little boy who they named Mitchell. And as soon as Mitchell was born, Krista decided she wanted to stay home with the baby, and Bart was in full support, and so he went out and he got a great job as an accountant, which paid enough money to pay for the whole family. And 18 months after Mitchell was born, Bart and Krista welcomed their second and final child, another boy who they named Chandler. A few years after Chandler was born, <laughs> Bart and Krista had saved up just enough money that they could finally afford to buy a house of their own. And the house they finally settled on was just this very modest, small, two-story home in this very quiet little town in Wisconsin called Windsor. Windsor is not far from DeForest, where they had been renting an apartment. But this little <coughs> house in Windsor was perfect for Bart, Krista, and their boys. Not only did it have enough space for the family, but because it was their own house, as soon as they moved in, Krista got to really lean in to her passion for interior design, and she got to design the entire layout of the house. And then she continued to take pride in keeping the house perfectly tidy and beautiful at all times. As for Bart, he immediately began doing home repair project after home repair project. This house became his trophy, and he wanted to make sure his trophy was polished at all times. And it wasn't just the physical house that made this feel like their forever home. It was also their neighbors. As soon as they moved in, Bart and Krista made friends with all of the people that lived on their street, and they were all so friendly and welcoming. And then before long, the Haldersons were deeply invested in community activities like the Boy Scouts and the Kiwanis Club, and they were donating their time and money to other charities. I mean, so quickly, the Halderson family just found where they belonged. And over the... Basically, they became the typical. Uh, <coughs> good. I know you still. We apologize for the coffee. You know? She's still getting over whatever she got. <laughs> but um, typical, typical American family, you know, like yeah. both both from a college background, you know, went went got a regular job, got married, mm -hmm. started had having kids, kids had, got. You know what I'm saying? Stay at home wife. Mm -hmm. He went out, got him a good paying job as an accountant. Typical job, American yeah, job, yeah. pays pays well. Oh, he got an accounting degree then. <laughs> but it's just, you know, typical typical in a typical town in yeah, Wisconsin, yeah. typical state. Blue collar. Two plus decades, life for the Haldersons in this little home in Windsor remained perfect. Bart continued to move up the ladder at his accounting firm, and Krista continued to be a devoted mother and housekeeper. As for the kids, Mitchell and Chandler, they were given every opportunity their parents could possibly give them, and in that loving and supportive environment, they both thrived. By 2021, the older brother, Mitchell, who was 25 at the time, he had moved out and was living alone in an apartment, and he had graduated from college. He had landed an incredible IT job with a local, very successful company. He was engaged to be married, and he was about to buy his own house. As for the younger brother, Chandler, who was 23 at the time, he was still living at home with Bart and Krista, but he was doing just as well as his older brother. He was in his final year of college, but he had already accepted a full-time job with SpaceX that was set to start in Florida as soon as he graduated. And while he was in his final year of college, in between his studies, he worked part-time at a local insurance company to help pay rent to his parents, and he also volunteered the rest of his spare time with the Madison Police Department on their rescue scuba diving team. Chandler was also in a committed relationship with his girlfriend. But despite how well everything was going for Bart, for Krista, for Mitchell, for Chandler, their lives were about to take a serious turn for the worst. It all started in June of 2021. That month, Chandler, who was only weeks away from flying out to Titusville, Florida to start his job with SpaceX, fell down an entire flight of stairs, smashing his head in the process. Now, he immediately picked himself up and tried to tell himself that he was okay, but over the course of that day, he started to feel woozy and disoriented, and his legs started to feel numb. And so in a panic, he rushed himself to the hospital, and unfortunately, when they scanned his brain and they checked him 
him out. The doctors discovered he had a severe concussion from this fall, and he had a brain bleed that almost certainly would require surgery at some point down the road. Also, the numbness in his legs appeared to be the result of permanent nerve damage. And so suddenly, Chandler, who was so excited about this opportunity in Florida, is now back home in a neck brace with a cane to get around. And even with the cane, he can barely walk. And then adding insult to injury, he almost immediately lost the job at SpaceX because he couldn't travel to Florida to start the job. And so they filled it with someone else. Chandler. That is so sad, bro. That like, is you, so... like, possibly yeah, your yeah, dream yeah. job or dream start job. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> everything seems perfectly fine. Everything seems like it's going to be a success. And yeah. just a trip, probably trying to come downstairs, rushing to come downstairs. You slip. You stumble, fall, well, yeah. hit and your the unfortunate head. situation happened. Like, those be the craziest things, though. Yeah. Like, that, something that simple, it happened. Because he couldn't travel to Florida to start Damn. the job, and so they filled it with someone else. Chandler did his best to stay positive and optimistic, but, I mean, this was a crushing blow. Nice. Everything he had worked for had just been taken away. And it was crushing for his family, too. I mean, seeing their beloved Chaz, as they called him, laying on the couch looking totally miserable and depressed all day was awful. But despite how bad Chandler's accident was, the trauma it inflicted on Chandler and his family was nothing compared to what happened next. The Haldersons owned a small cabin that was located in a part of Wisconsin called White Lake. It was located about three hours drive to the north of their home in Windsor, and the cabin was situated inside of this rural forested area right near a big lake called White Lake, hence the name of the area. This cabin had been in the Halderson family since the 1940s, and when Mitchell and Chandler were little kids, Bart and Krista would take them up there all the time to go fishing, to go swimming, or just to relax. It was like their vacation home. But at some point, Chandler and Mitchell reached a certain age where they weren't that interested in going to the cabin anymore, and so as a result, Bart and Krista basically stopped going. However, just two weeks after Chandler's horrific injury, there was this huge storm that rolled through the White Lake area. And after the storm had passed, some people who lived permanently in White Lake called Bart and Krista and told them, hey, I was driving past your cabin and I saw there was some broken windows. It looks like your cabin might have been damaged from the storm. And so Bart and Krista, they're thinking, oh my goodness, we got to get up there as soon as we can and patch up that window and fix the rest of the cabin before another storm rolls through and totally ruins the cabin. And so Bart and Krista pull out their calendar and they see the next weekend coming up is the 4th of July weekend. The 4th of July is a very big holiday in America. It's when we celebrate our independence. And the way White Lake celebrates the 4th of July is with a big parade down Main Street and these amazing fireworks out over White Lake. And so Bart and Krista, they figure, you know what, let's just hold off and head up to our cabin in a couple of days to time it with the 4th of July weekend and we can make the necessary repairs and we can enjoy the festivities of the holiday and kind of have a mini vacation up there. And so that was all fine and good, but right before they left for this trip up to White Lake, Bart and Krista started acting a little weird. On the evening of Thursday, July 1st, the day before Bart and Krista are supposed to leave for this trip, they begin packing up their things. And since Chandler lives with them, he's at home, he sees them doing this, and at some point he kind of got up and hobbled over and tried to help them pack, but that was short-lived because his legs were so weak. And so he sat down and just kind of watched them pack. And what he saw is they were packing lots and lots of cash and silver bars into their luggage. Although this was kind of odd to Chandler, he decided not to say anything because he figured, you know what, maybe they want to stash their cash and silver in the cabin like a keepsake. I don't know, but it's their business. It's not mine. And so Bart and Krista, they continue to pack up their things. And Chandler, because he can't go anywhere, just continues to kind of watch them pack. And at some point, Chandler asks his parents, so how are you getting up to White Lake? And his parents would say, oh, we're just getting a ride from our friends, another couple. They're driving us up. 
but they didn't tell him who the couple was. They basically just said, it's our friends. And so again, Chandler's sitting there thinking, okay, this whole thing is a little bit weird, but you know what? It's their business. I'm not gonna ask about it. They obviously don't wanna tell me. And so he just kind of let it go. And so at some point, Bart and Krista, they finish packing and they move all their luggage to the front of the house, right near the front door. And then a little while later, they and Chandler would retreat to their rooms and they would go to sleep. The next morning, July 2nd, Friday, Chandler got up early at about 6 a.m. And when he got up, he began slowly hobbling his way down the stairs, expecting to see his mom and dad having breakfast and, you know, getting ready to leave because they certainly wouldn't have left without telling him. But he gets downstairs and the house is dark and totally empty and all of the bags that his parents had packed the night before and put near the front door, they were all gone. And so Chandler's thinking, did my parents get up at like 5 a.m. and leave without telling me? And so he goes to the door and he looks out the window thinking, you know, maybe they're out there waiting outside. But when he looked outside, his parents weren't out there. And sure enough, their cars were still in the driveway. And so Chandler was left to believe that, well, I guess my parents did get picked up by whoever these friends were. And they did not feel the need to come tell me they were leaving. Now, this did leave Chandler a little bit shaken up. He just kept thinking about the strangeness of what they were packing and the fact that he didn't know who they were going with and now this sudden departure. But again, Chandler just told himself that his parents would be just fine. You know, these are just kind of random anomalies, but they are not indicative of there being any issue here. This is already kind of like very sketch and weird. Why? Because they're packing money, right? Mm -hmm. And he's packing, he said silver bars. And so, and then y'all won't, like it's a, well, nah, every time I ask my mom, she going somewhere, she typically tells me, like, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes parents be like, hey, you and the child stay in the child play type I thing. mean, well, they. But you being, <laughs> you being grown, they I mean, well, different. necessarily, they gave him an answer. It's just like, but. Well, but I'm saying, like, if you ask your mom, right, like, mom, who you going with? She ain't gonna be like, oh, friend. Or she might be like, oh, friend. You be like, who the friend? You be like, you, you, you know, such and such. And then she might be like, from work or from church or from yeah, this or yeah. from that. She'll do that. Especially as you've been older. Now, if you was a little younger, she'd be like, quit being nosy in, in grown folks' business. But as you've been older, it's a little different now. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just all weird. And but... then y'all love, to be real. <coughs> Now I I said it well. It's the fact that he lives with them. I don't think he'll. I don't think they one hundred percent would leave without you know what I'm saying. Telling him bye or letting mm -hmm. him know, hey, hey son, we're gone. We'll see you when we get back. I highly doubt. Now if he was just visiting in, in town or something, I still think they would have said, hey son, we're gone. Make sure whenever you leave, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're not coming back that same day, mm -hmm. so yeah, everything's odd. I'm ready to get it. Yeah. <laughs> So Chandler found a way to just kind of push these concerns out of his mind, and he just went about his day. And so because his parents were now going to be gone for the weekend, he promptly called his girlfriend, Catherine, and asked her to come over and stay at his house with him for a couple of days. And so she would, she comes over, and because Chandler can't really do anything because of his injury, they basically spent the weekend just kind of lounging around and eating nice food and watching Netflix. But by the end of the weekend, on Sunday morning, there was an undertone that both of them noticed that something was wrong. Chandler had told his girlfriend about the strangeness of his parents' quick departure to White Lake, but he had said to her, you know, I'm sure it's fine, and she basically said the same thing, that of course your parents are fine. But by Sunday, Bart and Krista had still not called or texted or checked in with Chandler or Mitchell or anybody. They were just totally gone and silent. And whenever Chandler or Catherine tried calling Bart or Krista's cell phone, it didn't even ring. It just went straight to voicemail. But by late that day, Sunday, July 4th, when really concerns were starting to mount about what happened to Bart and Krista, Krista would text her son, Chandler. And what she basically said was, hey, we arrived in White Lake. You know, it's packed here. The service is terrible, but... Made it safely, can't get anything through. And yes, it's packed. Going to White Lake today for the parade. It will be on Monday night, Tuesday, early. Mm. What? It's just don't even the text layout stuff. But again, I don't I don't previously know how to right, interact. Right. Stuff, yeah. 
It's just stick around for the parade and we'll be back either Monday night or Tuesday early. And so as soon as Chandler and Catherine saw this text message, it was like all their worries were completely gone and they were just excited to see Bart and Krista when they came back the next day or the day after. But the next day, Monday, Bart and Krista did not come home. They didn't call anyone. They didn't text anyone. And again, whenever anybody tried calling their cell phones, which now was Chandler, Catherine, and also Mitchell, who had been looped in on what's going on with his parents, whenever they tried calling them, Bart and Krista's phone didn't ring. It just went straight to voicemail. And then the day after that, on Tuesday, July 6th, so this was the day that Krista said they would be home by, they didn't come home. And again, no one could get in touch with them. And again, they did not contact anyone. Additionally, on Tuesday, Krista's office began calling Chandler and Mitchell, asking if they knew where Krista was. Krista had recently taken up a customer service job at an auto body shop, and apparently she was scheduled to work on that day, Tuesday the 6th, and she was scheduled to work on that previous Friday, which was the day Bart and Krista left for the lake, meaning she had left on this trip without telling anybody at work. And according to her boss, Krista was the type of person who even if she was running a couple of minutes late, she would call ahead or text ahead and let people know. So for her to just completely not show up and tell no one was totally out of character. But before Chandler, Mitchell, and Catherine could process this information, Bart's employer began calling them, asking the same things. Hey, do you know where Bart is? He's supposed to be working right now and we can't get in touch with him and he didn't put in for time off. And so all afternoon on Tuesday the 6th, Chandler, Mitchell, and Catherine and other family members are trying to call Bart and Krista. They're calling other people in White Lake to see if anybody knows where they are, but nobody does. And so finally, the next morning on Wednesday, July 7th, when still there was no word from Bart and Krista, Chandler goes to the police and he files a missing person report. And pretty much right away, the police in Windsor contacted the police up north in White Lake and asked them to do a check on this cabin to see if maybe Bart and Krista were there and maybe they just had terrible service or, you know, maybe there was some sort of accident or something that happened. Right. But when the White Lake police arrived at the Halderson cabin, Bart and Krista were not there. No one was there. In fact, the cabin looked like it had not been used in months. The outside was totally overgrown and inside there was no food in the fridge. And interestingly, the police would also tell Chandler, Mitchell, and Catherine that there was no damage done to this cabin. There were no broken windows or any sign, at least no obvious sign, of storm damage to this cabin. And so after this revelation, of course, Bart and Krista's family is like, wait a minute, who called them and told them to head up there to fix these obvious broken windows? Are those the same mystery friends that drove them up in the first place? I mean, what's going on here? Was this some sort of trap? Have they been set up? Are they okay? And so by the following day, Thursday, July 8th, when still there was no sign of Bart or Krista and the police really didn't have any new leads to speak of, Chandler was desperate. And so he went to local media and he said, please run a story about my parents and get the word out there there that they're missing and maybe someone knows something and they'll come forward. And so local media, they would do that. They would run this piece. And so while this media coverage is going on on the 8th, Chandler would go back to his home and he would hobble door to door asking each of his neighbors if they had a security camera on the front of their house that might have picked up an angle of the street and so may have seen his parents on the morning of July 2nd when they climbed into that mystery couple's car. Smart, smart move, smart move on Chandler. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, uh, this is this is crazy. This whole story is very. And bizarre. I don't like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I'm ready to like know what happened because I don't even have like any type of nothing clue. Give you clues I mean, yeah, or yeah to like to or give you red flags. Anything. I mean, yeah. it's all red flags, but... Well, I'm saying like a, like a big old red flag. Like, yeah, ding, like, ding, 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 like this, this is, is what happened or this is whatever. But, yeah, is, I'm ready to... Like, like the like, mystery behind <laughs> this one is it's such build a build-up. Up. Like, because build y'all get a call. And then y'all said y'all schedule, <coughs> like, not this weekend, but the following weekend we gonna go. So, then then you're prepared. And then everything's happening around 4th of July weekend. So, what... 
Y'all thought y'all were going to get busy and get looped up in the whole holiday weekend thing? Then it makes me think also, the call, did a call actually come through about the cabin? Because even if you're going up there to fix the cabin while we taking money and all of that, while we're packing all this money. Well, you, wait, you that. never know because some family might do that, though. Like, have a safe up there that people might not know about or secret compartment inside the home. You That that I'm part, not you true, might not true. know. But that was a, it was out of the norm, though. Because Chandler was like, why they pack? It was out of the Everything norm, was though. out of the norm. Not even the money, just... just. But that's what I'm saying. So that's not something that they normally do to take money here. Because and they knew the sons had no interest to go up there anymore. <laughs> so that... that yeah. Part being an alibi. Hey, we're going up to, to the cabin. Because yeah. y'all don't want to go because y'all have no interest. Would it be easy so, for them, just them by themselves to... Yeah, so I'm really like... Something. I'm ready to like know like, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah might have picked up an angle of the street and so may have seen his parents on the morning of July 2nd when they climbed into that mystery couple's car that took them up to White Lake. Chandler was hoping that if he got this footage, somebody would be able to identify who these mystery friends were. But unfortunately, none of his neighbors had that footage. But as it would turn out, it didn't matter because on that day, the 8th, the police made a discovery that at first seemed relatively minor, relatively small, but when they examined it more closely, they realized it was a huge discovery and it completely broke the case wide open. To understand this breakthrough, we have to go back to June 29th, 2021. So three mm -hmm. days right. before Bart and Krista hopped into that mystery person's car and headed up to White Lake. On that day, June 29th, Bart had finally just had it. There had been something bothering him for a really long time, and he had just finally decided, you know what, today I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. And so Bart pulled out his phone, he punched in a number, he put it to his ear, and after a few rings, a young man named Omar Job answered his call. In total, Bart and Omar would talk on the phone for a total of 17 minutes. And for the first half of the call, it was basically just Bart being really angry and aggressive towards Omar. But then during the second half of the call, when Omar really had a chance to speak for the first time, Bart's tone completely changed. He was no longer angry. He actually sounded totally defeated. And so after this 17 minute phone call finally comes to an end, Bart is left kind of in shock, but he knows he now needs to set up an even more intense meeting with a group of people and he needs to tell them what he just learned from Omar. And within 24 hours, Bart had set this additional high stakes meeting with this other group. It was set for 3 p.m. on July 1st. July 1st was the day before Bart and Krista would leave for White Lake. And so on July 1st, the day of this new pivotal meeting, Bart was working from home. And at some point he looked at his watch and he saw it was just after 2 p.m. And even though this meeting he was going to have was still an hour away, the location of the meeting was a bit of a drive away. And so he knew he needed to leave soon. And so Bart stopped working and he texted Chandler who was in the house with him. He just said, ready to leave when you are. Chandler was aware of how important this meeting was for his dad. He also understood the terrible position his dad was in. And so he had agreed to go with his dad to this meeting. And so after a couple of minutes, both Chandler and Bart have gotten dressed and ready for this meeting. And they met downstairs on the first floor. And after kind of a nod to each other, they begin walking towards the front door. But then something happens. Chandler was standing behind Bart. And so as they're moving towards the door, Chandler reaches out and grabs a rifle he was hiding on the first floor. He raises it and he fires at least two shots into his father's back. And then once his father fell to the ground and was either dead or dying, Chandler, calm as can be, pulled out his phone and he texted his mother and told her, hey, dad's phone is dead, so just text me. And then Chandler also sent his mother a text saying, get soda on your way home. To which his mother just wrote, K, okay, I can, smiley face. All Chandler was trying to do was buy as much time as possible to prep the house for his mother's return. And so over the next couple of hours, we don't know exactly what Chandler did, but it's assumed he moved his father's body into some hiding place. And then after maybe trying to clean up a little bit, Chandler laid in wait for his mother. And at 4.58 p.m., Krista would clock out of her job at the automotive shop. She would make a pit stop at a store to buy Chandler some soda. And then between 5.15 and 5.30, security cameras on neighbors' houses would pick her up pulling into her driveway. And 
then just a couple of minutes later, she walked inside of her beautiful little dream home where she had raised her family over the wow. past couple of decades, only to be immediately gunned down by her son the second she walked inside. It would turn what? out Chandler was living a double life. He had never graduated from college. He had gone to college, but for like a semester and flunked out. But he just kept telling his friends and family that he was progressing through college and then he graduated from college, all made up. He also did not have a job at the insurance company. He just told his family that he worked from home, which really meant he sat in his room and played video games all day. He was not a rescue scuba diver for the Madison Police Department because one, he was not a scuba diver, and two, because the Madison Police Department did not have a rescue scuba diving team. Did. And needless to say, he did not have a job with SpaceX. He had never even applied. As for his head injury, he may have bumped his head at some point, and he did go to the doctors by himself sometime in mid-June, but that doctor just told him he might have a mild concussion and then offered him a neck brace and told him, you don't need to wear it. That's only if you want to wear it. But then very quickly, Chandler turned this non-injury into a debilitating, crippling, life-altering injury and literally hobbled all around with a neck brace and cane. And the reason he did that is he needed an excuse for why he wasn't starting his job at SpaceX. In short, Chandler lied about virtually every aspect of his life to virtually everyone in his life. And for the most part, people did believe him. However, his parents were becoming more and more suspicious. Specifically, in 2021, he was telling them, oh yeah, I'm working at the insurance company but he never had any money. He could barely pay rent to his family, if at all. And so his dad would say to him, how is it you are employed, but have no money? And the way Chandler would handle this is he would create fake email accounts pretending to be people in HR at this insurance company. And then yeah. acting as them, he would write these convoluted emails that had these ridiculous excuses for why Chandler had not been paid yet. And so he would have that fake email account email his real account account and then Chandler in his actual email would write back really angrily and sternly saying you gotta fix this my family's not happy and then he would once again pretend to be the HR person who would say oh, I'm sorry it's some issue that you can't affect we're gonna fix it but you gotta wait and Chandler would take these exchanges and he would forward them to his father and while Bart didn't necessarily totally believe what he was being shown it was enough to get him to stop asking questions but Bart and Krista were also suspicious of of other aspects of Chandler's life. Like for example, his school records. At some point he needed to show them his transcripts and he would tell them, oh, you know, I can't, I can't access my transcripts. And so Bart and Krista are like, why? Can't you just log in and pull up your unofficial transcripts at least? And the way Chandler would handle this was the same way he handled the insurance company. He would create fictitious email accounts of people that were college advisors at Madison College where he claimed to have gone and graduated from. And he would do those phony back and forths where it looked like the college was telling Chandler, sorry, you can't get your transcripts. It's this huge problem. That's totally our fault, not yours, but you just got to wait. There's nothing else you can do. We can't get him for you right now. And when, because he didn't graduate, right? He was a no. I'm saying like this was uh, when the story first happened. He was about to graduate. Yeah, right? he was getting. Yeah. So he know because I was like, he was like in his last semester. Because at one point in my head, I was like, how he finessed the graduation? In his last semester. And I was yeah. thinking about my cousin. How she finessed her graduation. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, you can finesse that joy and not get a degree that's, that's in crazy. college. All you gotta do is go up there. As yeah. long as you got your cap and gown, go up there, hand them a piece of paper with your name on it, yeah. and they're going to read it out. Yeah, I knew this was like, I was like, it got to be something else, because you, like, it just did not. I knew when like, the something sons missing. did. But it's it's the fact, though, bro, you are mad because you're not being successful, <laughs> and all you want to do is play video games all day. And what you getting tired of your parents why you, questioning why you don't have money, why you not, why you don't have a job? Are you why? not good at video games? Because in twenty twenty one, why this, why that, why that? Even you know, in whatever. twenty twenty, you should you could have hopped on Twitch, hopped on YouTube, start gaming and gaming online and making money. Uh, yeah, but like, I don't know. There's, there's access to. It's I don't know. Like I'm just like there's no excuse. Yeah, none. Like he is horrible.
numbers, but you just gotta wait. There's nothing else you can do. We can't get them for you right now. And when Chandler would send these exchanges to Bart, Bart would get totally worked up about it. And finally, he demanded that Chandler give him a phone number so he can talk to one of these college advisors. And so Chandler went out and got a burner phone from a convenience store and he gave that phone number to his dad. And then when his dad called this number up, somebody picked up someone introducing themselves as Daniel Spieth, which really was just Chandler disguising his voice. And Daniel Spieth would give Bart the same spiel about how, oh, I'm so sorry. It's all the college's fault that we can't get your son's transcripts. You're just going to have to wait. And so finally, on June 29th, 2021, Bart had just had it with his son. He was convinced his son was lying or there was something going on. There was just too much about his son's life that didn't add up. And so Bart decided he was just going to call Madison College and pretend to be Chandler and see if he could get his transcripts. And so he dialed a number for customer service at Madison College. And after a few rings, Omar Job, a customer service rep at Madison College, picked up. And initially, Bart was kind of aggressive and mean towards Omar for really no reason other than he was just so frustrated with this whole situation. And so he's on this call pretending to be Chandler and he's kind of barking at Omar to give me my transcripts right now. I go to your school. There's no reason you can keep them from me. But then after a couple of minutes, Omar finally was able to talk. And he said, you know, hey, Chandler, I looked you up in the system and you don't go to this school. You've never gone to the school save for maybe one semester and you failed out. And so it's at this point when Bart hears this that he just pauses for a really long amount of time on this call. And then he begins asking follow-up questions that are not really connected to trying to get transcripts because now he knows the transcripts don't exist because his son didn't go to school. And so he begins asking Omar, does Daniel Spieth still work there? And so Omar would look him up and he would say, no, there's no Daniel Spieth that works here. And there's no Daniel Spieth that's ever worked here. And because Chandler had used like five or six different names when pretending to be college advisors for Madison College, Bart, in addition to asking about that Daniel Spieth guy, <coughs> asked about every other name he had interacted with, believing he was talking to Madison College. And one by one, Omar told him, I'm sorry, those people do not work here. I've never heard of these people. They're not in the directory. I'm sorry. And so finally, at the end of that 17 minute call, Bart knew his son was living a huge lie. And so he hung up with Omar and then Bart called real college advisors at Madison College and he set a meeting for July 1st at 3 p.m. And then he told Chandler that he had set this meeting and Chandler was going to come with him and they together were going to ask those college advisors why they can't produce Chandler's transcripts. Now, Bart, of course, knew Chandler did not have transcripts. And so he likely had set this meeting to get Chandler to call the meeting off and come clean about this big lie so that Bart could get his son back on the right track, stop lying and live a real life. But the way Chandler handled being caught was not to own up to any of this. He didn't call off the meeting. He just waited until the day of the meeting. And then he killed his father, killed his mother, and then dismembered their bodies and burned their body parts in the family fireplace, including what? their heads. And then when he couldn't destroy their bodies completely, he took what was left of their remains and scattered them all over town in parks and forests and rivers. He even put his father father's headless, armless, legless torso behind his <coughs> girlfriend's parents' house. And all the while, as he's doing this, he's spinning this ridiculous story to his girlfriend, to his brother, to other members of the Halderson family, to police, to colleagues of Bart and Krista, that Bart and Krista just up and left on the morning of July 2nd with this mystery couple. And oh, by the way, my parents, they were putting cash and silver bars in their luggage. So I don't know. They went up to White Lake and now they're gone. I don't know what happened to them. We don't know why. Bro, this shit is wild. Oh my God, oh, I, need because to, I need to stop for a second because oh, God. Oh, because you do not want to basically grow the up. And admit the bullshit you've been doing. And live a 
live your life. Live a normal freaking life. Live a real life. And what not what you afraid up. they're going to tell you go out here and get a real job? <clears throat> just like, get a I'm job, so fool. As to why you just, okay, if you didn't want to go to school, be like, okay, I'm going to go work. I'm going to go find me a job. And the fact you work. went all the way through the fact <laughs> A pretending a fake injury. I hope. I hope. Oh, I, I really felt sad for you. I'm like, damn, you feel like down the stairs. Up. You get this yeah. job lined up. You know, I'm really like. You even hit your head because that can be traumatic as hell. Very manipulative. Your legs no. I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> like that's that's sad. You fell down. The, you got brain and to, bleed. And your parents would have been okay because all Why you the did parents wanna, didn't, Parents could have followed up in that situation. Huh? I said parents could have followed up in that situation, but same way He's with the gone. same way. Uh, that's what I'm finna say. Same way with the uh, school situation. Trying to get in medical information, you still would have had to go through the sun. You still would have had, especially with medical. Medical is gonna be even more, you know, yeah, tougher. Yeah, you ain't so, finna just finesse that one. That would look way more tricky. I'm expect well over the phone maybe so because I'm mean, pretty sure yeah. you knew all this information and stuff. But at the end of the day, like, you still grown. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if you didn't want to, okay, you fell out of school. Cool. They would have probably understand it. I mean, it ain't for everyone. And okay, then we could have got, we, you could, we'll find you a job. We'll get you a job. Just but the work, thing is, make some money, save well, flunking out of flunking out for a semester, you can always go back and appeal and get back in school. You might have been on uh, probation, financial probation, but you can, if you really nine wanted to do that. Ten, if he, he didn't, want to, but he, he didn't, didn't want, want to. to. In this case, now times out of 10, he didn't want to. He, oh, he, he wanted to do a sit at, bro. And leech off his parents. For five years. So I'm just thinking 18 to 23. For five years, you sit at home playing video games, not doing it. Making damn up thing. lies. You know how much energy and time it takes to be emailed? I would have got confused. Oh, who the last person responded? Like, that's a lot of work. That's, that's a lot <laughs> that of dedication. Is, bro. You could have put it, you could put that towards said, anything. It. You could have put that energy into anything else. And been successful. But you rather live this fake life and kill that's, people. And kill your parents. It's crazy, man. Very crazy. Well, I don't know. They went up to White Lake and now they're gone. I don't know what happened to them. We don't know why Chandler <coughs> chose the story he did. It's unclear if he was trying to make it seem like his parents were suspicious and had gotten into something that had maybe gotten them harmed or kidnapped, or if he was trying to make it seem like his parents were just super gullible and had been taken advantage of by this mystery couple. We don't know. He was just trying to make the whole situation seem plausibly suspicious. Ultimately though, Chandler did so many things that got him caught from the mountain of physical evidence he left behind inside of his house, where he killed and dismembered his parents, and also at the various dump sites where he didn't even bury the body parts. He would just put them underneath sticks and branches, and so they were very easy to find. Wow. To his extremely suspicious behavior on July 7th, when he walked into the police station and reported his parents missing. That whole time he was talking to police officers, he was acting so weird and was just saying things that didn't make sense, and he just totally came off like a guy who did not care at all that his parents were gone and really just seemed like a guy who was hiding something. But the big breakthrough that happened on July 8th that broke the case open stemmed from the text message Krista's phone sent to Chandler's phone okay. on July 4th. When Chandler walked into the police station on July 7th and said, my parents are missing, one of the first questions they had for him was, okay, well, when was the last time you spoke to your parents? And Chandler would tell them he got a text message from his mother, Krista, on Sunday, July 4th. And then he showed them the text message. And the text message said that they had arrived in White Lake and they were going to be sticking around for the parade and they'd be back in a couple of days. But the police noticed that this text message had been sent on July 4th, but in White Lake that year, the parade was on July 3rd. So when this text came through, the parade that anyone in White Lake would be aware of, it's a small place, you're not gonna miss this parade. Yeah. The parade had already happened. So why would Krista be texting her son that she was going to stick around in White Lake for the parade that had already happened? And so this led police to check phone records and they would discover that text message was sent from Krista's phone to Chandler's phone. But when it was sent on July 4th, Krista's phone was not in White Lake. Instead, it was inside of the Halderson home, right near Chandler's phone. 
And so when police went to the Halderson house, they searched it and they found Krista's phone in the garage, underneath a drawer, inside of a shoe, wrapped in tin foil, next to her driver's license. And so Chandler had obviously sent that text message on July 4th using his mother's phone to himself but he had just gotten the date wrong of the parade. And so this discrepancy really opened up the floodgates and before long, it was beyond obvious that Chandler was the killer. And after a thorough investigation, it was determined that Chandler had acted entirely alone, meaning Catherine, his girlfriend, and his brother Mitchell had nothing to do with it. They were just innocent bystanders. Chandler would ultimately be found guilty of killing his parents and he would be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of prison. Role. Chandler has still not taken any responsibility for what he's done. Instead, he just tells anybody who will listen that his plan is to continue to appeal his verdict. Weird. So that's going to do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, the next time the like button is in. But the reason why he won't admit to it so he can be so he can try to be able to appeal because if he admits to it. He can't appeal it, you know what I'm saying? And 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 two, that's just his that's just his behavior. His, I mean, he don't admit yeah. to anything. He can't own up to anything. He can't be real true, about anything. True. Everything Facts. is a lie. He's so in denial. He think it. What you're so He's delusional? Do, like, yeah, yeah, bro? that's the word I was finna use. Delu like, He's I'm delusional so, to what the world really like, is. What? Like you, he doesn't. You had this lie for five, four and a half years, however long you started doing the lie. And you just kept going and you got caught. And instead of like, okay, dad, okay, mom, I flunked out, you know, first semester, whatever the case. I've been lying this whole time. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to disappoint you guys or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Anything. But you decide to take your parents out. You thought that was the, you thought that was the answer? That was, that's crazy. So, that remind <clears throat> that reminded like it's so many cases we've seen with Mr. Ballin where people have done this. Yeah. Even that girl, she did it with her her boyfriend. Yeah. Killing her uh, dad. another. It's been like oh that other situation that happened. Uh, I can't remember when it was, but <clears throat> he it was kind of the same way where he fell and he ended up killing like his parents at their house mm -hmm. because he became such a failure and yeah. he was trying to go to <coughs> this thing and this thing and yeah. his whole life. Bro, Mr. Ballin has a exact same case like this and it's scary though. Let That's me see crazy. if I can find but it. But stuff happens like this so often. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember it, like... And I never... When stuff happens like this, I never understand, like, the person's thought process. I'm like, of all the solutions, of all the things you could have done, you choose to take someone close to... Just, or just take someone's life, period. Fact. Because you don't want to own up to your mistakes or own up to your... You know, like, it's crazy to me. I, I don't get it. I can't find it. It's okay. It's okay. But it was one situation where... Is that it was the top three? It was one yeah, in the so top three. Yeah, so it'd be hard three. to even. But I'm but, pretty sure it was another situation because, like I said, it happens often. Like you hear about stories like this. And a it's lot. the fact, bro. You really like all because you can be real with yourself. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you have to be real with yourself. Because yeah. I like to. Uh, I'll be 100. I flunked out of college at one point. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I first started college, doing yeah. great. When real world sit in, you got to start trying to balance so much stuff. I flunked out. Yeah. Life fucking happens. Stuff happens all the time. But, but the thing is to, okay, understand, okay, what do I want out of life? All right. What okay. what do I want to do so I can be able to see in life? Then you have to take control of your life, figure, this, figure it out. Yeah. That's the part of being an adult is mm. figuring it out and not trying to wait have somebody else he figure your just life out. So lazy, for you. didn't want lazy. to do anything, wanted to leech off his parents, and didn't want to grow up. And <coughs> it is a possibility that some parents cripple their kids because they didn't gave them um so much. But at, in this situation, you're not gonna blame the parents because he only went to college one semester. Mm -hmm. Rest. That's one part, one four months. Yeah. Rest of this time for years, you no, yeah. you 
And it just happened last year. There's no one. He's the only person to blame. Man, there's nobody else to blame. Your brother didn't turn out like this. <laughs> like, it's just you. Right. It's just well, you. You're just it, lazy. It, it, I get, no, I get that, but I'm just saying, like, it ain't the parents, that, you know? Like, it's definitely you. You're just lazy. You want to leech off of your parents. You didn't want to do anything. You want to just be sitting at home, playing video games, doing nothing. And how your girlfriend, is she not paying I'm, attention? The, again, I'm just... I'm really just mind blown of all the energy and the dedication and the time he put into keeping up this lie so long. Because I'm surprised like, I'm your like, girl ain't you even peep shit. You could have did that with anything else. You could have went and got a job. Like I said, yo, twenty. think about it, 2020, 2021, <clears throat> the, the country was on shutdown mode. Yeah. You been, I know you were getting <laughs> some STEM checks. You could have turned that money and, and took it, and you could have started. Hey, got hey, hey, parents, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do YouTube part time or Twitch or something. When everybody else started doing it, because you love playing video games every day, all day, nine times out of ten. Again, crazy. Again, weird. lazy. Regardless of the fact you, you can sit and be, play something yeah. for fun and whatever, but you still you don't want to do anything. Yeah, like you just yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, this is crazy. Man. This is super sad. Rest in peace to Bart. Rest in peace to Krista. Like, and neither one saw it coming at all. Not, Dad not had all. his had his back turned towards you. At Mom all. just comes in. She's thinking, "I'm coming home to my 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 family." And it was all out of love. Like, I just want you to be honest with me. Just like we'll figure it out. But I just need you to be honest. I just need you to own up, be honest. Because if you just had been honest from the jump, say, "Hey, hey, <laughs> mom and dad." I, college might not be for me. I flunked out. Yeah, we'll figure out what we can do to get you back on track. Like, that's not the end all. Like, life is not over. You're still, you're 23. Like, come on. Even now when you, you flunked out. But the thing is, you flunked out at 18. Because that's what thing I'm like. <laughs> yeah. You flunked out after your first semester. Yeah. You had plenty of time to be able to f fucking like, yeah, figure it out. figure it out. You, you, you didn't care. Yeah. But the it's, thing is, you had to... You have to been thinking about this for a minute to act upon killing your parents. And then you go to... Because you just don't pull the gun one then, day and say... Because you had it there. You, you probably had, it, had it there. Or it was, or it's always there. I don't know how, yeah. you know, whatever. But you had the nerve and the audacity to go to the news. Did you get this on the news? He, you going to police. You going to neighbors trying to look at cameras. You knew nothing was going to be there. But you had, you to, you had to kind of cover up and, you know, and you show that to, you had... You had some type of, not even remorse, that you was trying to, you really was trying to play trying all this out. Trying to figure it out. Trying to, I need to know what, like, I'm even, no, I need no, to know like what I'm saying like going, No, I'm saying, like, going to the news and going to, you were trying to play play a victim role. Yeah, yeah, To yeah. the point where I got to make it seem as though. I'm, I don't need no no eyes on, on me, me, so let yeah, me do my I'm, part I'm, so that I nah, feel like, you know, yeah. like. I'm in this with everyone else trying to figure out what happened to my but parents. But I'm the reason why all this didn't happen to my parents. Weird. And I mean, then you burn the sick. bodies in, in. That's super sick. And you literally probably had to sit there and, and put the box. That's sick. And then Do have that the nurse smell? To, then they had a nurse to have your, invite your girlfriend over knowing that you done did. Do that. But do like burn the body <laughs> smell because thing is chimney, the neighbor. Yeah. Cause when, when people burn around here, we smell it. So could people smell burning... That's... I don't even want to think about it, babe. But, yeah, this is super sick, and... Mm. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. And then to just be like, okay, well... And it, it don't seem like you're showing no remorse. He, he hasn't, because he hasn't even owned up like to it. Like, none at all. Yeah. yeah so. And then you want to... I don't know. People... I don't he won't people. own up to it, because he wants to appeal. I don't get people, but, but. anyway... Y'all let us know y'all thoughts. Uh, Definitely six, rest in peace to them. Yeah, RIP. Yeah. RIP to, to Bart and Krista, but To a great family. Yeah, to, you know Two great parents that tried to raise two successful kids, but hey, you can do what you can only do you what you can. You can only do so much. Yeah. yeah. But um, again, let us know y'all thoughts and opinions in the comments, man. But as always, y'all know how it go. I do go by the name of JB Kid. This is We are. We are go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my promise. Keep my money long. Get my team strong. Let me run away from my promise.